we are going to discuss a methodology all people, especially those under threat, should know about. It could save your life. Hello, I'm the self-appointed bard of the American Readout. Today we're going to talk about um, the one-time pad encryption method and why it may be extremely helpful for people to communicate more securely. In a previous video in this series, we discussed um, some of the people who are behind the creation and reducing these type of process and procedure to repeatable form. Security of communications can be critical in an emergency. In my, you can categorize threats to communication in any way you want. I have found it useful and simple to categorize threats to communication in three groups. Your wife, your local sheriff, and a tyrannical nation state bent on genocide and mass theft. <laughs> that would be funny if it wasn't. For example, by using Touch ID on your Apple iPhone, you can pretty much prevent your wife from getting into your phone and reading your messages. However, your local sheriff can quickly and easily uh, get your fingerprints and then use them to open up your phone. Biometric data is not secret. And a nation state can even just more easily just send, a, send Apple a national security letter in a cell and download your, your iPhone's cloud backup and then crack that um, and then without even your knowledge. By the way, nation a nation state, any nation state, can easily um, download, um, send Facebook or Twitter a national security letter or a letter and demand information, and they will provide it. They have said that many times. Thus, if you want to reduce the chance of your message being intercepted by your wife, the, the local sheriff, and a tyrannical nation state, we recommend things like WIRE. Wire is a really good application for you to communicate with. Uh, and if you don't have it, you're not using it, you're putting people at risk. You can read more about the detailed reasons why I, we recommend Wire so strongly on my primary blog, Charles Carroll Society. Just search for Wire and it'll be, um, you'll find it. And also I'll try to link below in the show notes. However, what happens in a situation where the internet and the electrical grid is down or is flaky or is simply denied to you? How can you communicate that is highly secure? Well, after a lot of research by a significant number of people, some that we've identified, one answer that we have found is the one-time pad or OTP. Essentially the one-time pad as implemented uh, by the product that we're gonna be discussing, discussing has a conversion table that translates all letters and common use symbols of the alphabet into numbers. Then what we do or what that system do is normally what you would do without any automated means is you'd grab a bunch of 10 sided dice say and or like you need know, these gaming dice or these dungeons and dragon dice and then you would just start rolling out a random series set of numbers this random series set of numbers is called the one time pads pre-shared key it is called this because to remain secure you must use a set of numbers that are random and you must use the set of numbers only once per message and in the early days, they were distributed in a pad. So you could use one uh, series of series numbers and then just rip off that pad and destroy it and then use the next pad down. So one time pad is how they got that. Um, many people have invented this, by the way, the Germans, the Soviets, the, or utilize this, the Americans, many people, and a couple of people that we'll talk about here in the future. Um, you, and also destroy it after use. You create two sets of this randomly generated one time pad uh, pre-shared key and only two sets. You keep one and you give the other to the guy you want to securely communicate who may be uh, away from you. That's why we call it pre-shared because you have to give them this pad before you use it. This pad must be kept perfectly secure by both people for the system to work. When you send the message, um, you can change the alphabet into the numbers as we said, talked about previously using your conversion table. You then subtra subtract using modular arithmetic. Modular arithmetic is where numbers wrap around upon reaching a certain value. In the case of the OTP, the, it's 10. Um, that's where, it, actually it's nine where it wraps around. It's 10 characters, zero through nine. Modular arithmetic sounds scary, but you use this complex sounding phrase all the time. Um, all the time. Uh, you use it when you tell time. If it is nine o'clock in the morning and you need to work for five more hours, what time do you get off? Normal arithmetic says it would be nine plus four equals 14. You don't get off at 14. 
but because the clock uses modular arithmetic, it wraps around at 12. So the correct answer, of course, is two. The clock is mod 12. The one-time pad uses mod 10 or characters zero through nine. The reason we must use modular arithmetic is because when we're adding the numbers, we do not want to impact the next column of numbers. Each column must stand on its own. Also by using modular arithmetic, it makes brute forcing the numbers extremely difficult. One way to use the OTP is convert your message into numbers using your uh, letters to number conversion table as previously discussed. You then subtract the letters, convert it to the numbers with the randomly generated one-time pad pre-shared key. You then send the numbers any way you want, hand-carried, email, through the mail, over the wire, through the radio, communication, social media posts, wherever you want to do it. Please note some places it's not legal to send encrypted communications over certain frequency bands or through other means. So make sure you obey your state and local and uh, laws and federal laws that you, that you may be exposed to. When your partner receives the random numbers, he will use modular arithmetic to add using the pre-shared key, one-time pad. What civilian cryptologists or scientists who study this field have said is that if you use truly random series of numbers to create the pre-shared key, never reuse the pre-shared key twice, and you keep the pre-shared key secure, then any message you encrypt with the pre-shared key using this one-time pad methodology is secure even against adversaries with infinite compute computational power. By the way, Wire and other well-designed encrypted messages uh, messaging applications use a form of one-time pad called perfect secrecy. Okay, thus we have a way a fairly low-tech modern group of novices can communicate that even a nation-state adversary were to intercept the message and had infinite com computational power, they most likely could not break with any known methods to all the civilian cryptologists we know of. However, if you've been paying kind of attention to what I've been talking about, there are several issues with the one-time pad method. One is it must be truly random. That is why the old fashioned way of doing this is using dice because they're pretty random. Computers, by the way, are horrible, normally horrible at generating true randomness. They're so bad, we call their approach pseudo randomness, not true randomness. And as the summer of Snowden has shown the world, nation states attack encryption method at this weakness of randomness. Another problem is secure generation of the one-time pad. It must be securely generated and kept secure. On that note, we have come to realize that the regular gener general purpose computers and general purpose computing operating systems and phones, iPhones and Androids, are simply not unable to be adequately secured by anyone that we know of, like us, novices, civilians. There are way too many ways to corrupt, eavesdrop, eavesdrop on general purpose computing computers and phone. By the way, this is why we strongly suggest you using a more secure operating system called Tails. In our next video, we will discuss how the Amron uh, guys and associated members address and solve these issues. Please let me know if any of you have experience using OTP, the one-time pad. I cannot say uh, in the comments below or on my primary blog where I do allow anonymous comments. I can't say this strongly enough. If you are anyone who's under threat of violence by a nation state, it is critical for you to get off social media. Stop using Facebook. Use some competitor like Minds.com. Also, stop using unencrypted communication methods, emails and such. Use, a, use the technology called wire or signal. Viva Crystal Ray, Viva Crystal Ray, Viva Crystal Ray, either Virgin Guadalupe.